What's going on, everybody? It's day three of CinemaCon 2024. Henry Cavill, The Crow, Angel Studios, Rosa Para is live from Vegas. Going to talk about all that stuff. Are you guys interested? Cavill's got not one, but two movies coming out this year. And, and we got a first look scenes at of The Crow. Let's do this right now. Five, four, three, ten. Uno. CinemaCon 2024 is sponsored in part by the WDW Pro Channel, the quickest growing entertainment news channel on the web with expert analysis on all things Disney and beyond. Check out WDW Pro on YouTube. Excellence in reporting, scoops, analysis, panelists, and more. Latino Slant at CinemaCon 2024 is brought to you in part by the Daily Chilla. For La Raza. By La Raza, politics, opinions, reviews, y más. TheDailyChilla.com All right here, I promised you guys, I promised you guys day three coverage like no other, and uh, we have a lot. So uh, before I bring in Rosa Para, uh, I want you guys to do a couple things. Smash the like, share the link, and uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and to the latinoslant.com because we're going to have exclusive content articles there as well. All right. We're going to we're going to we're going to start from the beginning of of her day. Um how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Halfway through day 3. <laughs> but yeah. I'm here, man. I'm here. Uh, we're 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 time traveling. So yeah. we're like, you know, yeah, it was a great day you had. <laughs> <laughs> wink wink um okay let's get right to it uh and thank you for your your coverage your day one and day two coverage was amazing people loving it people loving your joker out of the theater reaction to the trailer oh, <laughs> yeah 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 it's like i'm not even gonna clip my me talking about it when yeah. i put yours up it's yeah. like you know getting over like 300 views and that's that's big for us oh, um nice. okay here we go Angel Studios, Angel Controversial, whatever, Sound of Freedom, Cabrini. I've seen them both. I loved Cabrini. And I got to see some of those trailers that you got to see as far as the presentation. Give me your, your quick thoughts on these three movies that you got to, got to see uh, this morning. Yeah, so they showed us trailers for um, like like we have up there for Sight, Possum, Trot, and um, Homestead. And you know what? I was quite intrigued by them. Um, unlike you, I have not seen Cabrini yet. So I hadn't seen these trailers. So it was my first time watching uh, the trailers. And uh, what I found very interesting outside of the content that these movies are about is the release date and the schedule that they have going on. It's very easy to remember. They are, for the most part, picking holiday weekends to do this. So they're doing Memorial Day. They're doing Fourth of July. They're doing Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, and they're yeah. doing Christmas. So. Uh, um, so when you do have a long weekend, you're most likely assured to have an Angel Studio film playing in the theaters. And that is not only brilliant from my viewpoint, but mm -hmm. in the sense that, yes, you're going to have more people coming to the theater. But at the same time, these release dates are just so easy to remember because those are the days we normally have off <laughs> from work. So it, it's brilliant. I, I thought it was genius for them to, to do that. They did briefly also talk about the um, Angel Guild, which is the group of people they have um, that are in charge of selecting what movies are going to get greenlit and which ones are going to be getting theatrical releases and, and, and so on and so forth. And I was... It, it was an interesting concept um, in, in, in regards to these movies. Oh, yeah. oh, you don't agree with that? No, no, no. I actually, I'm, I'm in the, it's, it's the opposite because we're, oh. I would like be like, oh, what? I'm, that, I'm like, that's so innovative. And I yeah. think that's why they're successful. I think it's, it, you know, it, they're like, you know what? We don't need 
a Hollywood guild, a, yes. an establishment guild. We're going to establish our own guild and it's going right. to be based off of, uh, you know, trustworthy people. And you said something very interesting because, you know, with Sound of Freedom last year, 4th of July, Cabrini, mm -hmm. International Women's Day. They're releasing these things on purpose on holidays, like you said, days off, because they want all the families to come. This is really family programming. Right. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it, yeah. you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's really cool with the Angel Guild. I actually saw that um, uh, when they say, you know, like, uh, approved by the Angel Guild, and then it was the Cabrini film. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they got something special in regards to – um, we'll, we'll, we'll say like at the, at the heaviest faith base at the lightest, you know, like spirituality based films mm -hmm. for families, you know what I'm saying? Um, even, even, even in their own little way, uh, they, they managed to make Cabrini more accessible and more of a, uh, do gooder immigrant story than really a, a, a Catholic nuns mission, mission, uh, uh, that the Pope gave her. Mm -hmm. so it's a true story. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, you know, what you're saying, I totally, uh, I totally see Angel Studios uh, being smart about this. So we got Sight, Possum Shop, Homestead. Let me. You, you said you're kind of intrigued by that. Yeah, she, I was intrigued by Sight and Possum Shop. Mm -hmm. And we can even add, and if you add in Sound of Freedom and Cabrini, diversity. Oh my God in front of and behind the camera all these people of color and these true stories and these are like some some they've attracted some big names and i'm like hollywood's always talking about diversity that's angel studios is kind of stepping up to the plate yeah what, what, did you see any of that did you get any of that oh absolutely and just as a little piece of nugget for <laughs> talking about diversity right mm -hmm. um we got a little video from alejandro monteverde and uh, just thanking um the, nice. the 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 theater owners and and everybody there for um the success of both of his films that he directed sound freedom and cabrini so mm -hmm. yeah i mean you are talking about diversity they're doing it <laughs> Well, Monteverde is a class act, and uh, the more I read about him, find out about him, you know, uh, just uh, I love, I love what he said. He's like, listen, you know, after Sound of Freedom, um, it wasn't on my top of my list to do a, a film about a, an 18th century nun, <laughs> but he got inspired with yeah. Cabrini. So, yeah. um, well, cool. So, of Sight, Possum, Travel, and Homestead, which mm -hmm. got to you the most? Which, which? Which, uh, as a you know, as a as a piece, spoke to you. You know what? They both did, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Because obviously, I have a very special, uh, you know, the medical field. I, I that's what I work at. When I, what I do for my mm -hmm. full time job, I do on uh, how I earn my living. Pretty much, mm -hmm. uh, I, I work in a laboratory. But to see that they are taking it to um, something like site, which is about a. Uh, eye surgeons who are um, trying to help an orphan girl gain her sight back. And it's uh, from based on the trailer, I can see that it's going to be an emotionally moving um, film in terms oh, yeah. of what these surgeons have gone through or based on their childhood and their upbringing and why they do what they do, why they want to get in um, and help out um, other people out there. So it, it was a, an interesting trailer that did catch my attention, certainly piqued my interest, and I can't wait to, to see it. I'm definitely going to go check it out. And in terms of the other movie, Possum Trot, that Trot it's being promoted, it's being marketed mm -hmm. as um, the answer or perhaps the solution to Sound of Freedom. So Sound of Freedom, as we all know, uh, dealt with child trafficking. Now that these kids do get saved and they do get um, rescued, what happens mm. then? And Possum Trot uh, deals with, follows, um, I believe it's 22 families who end up adopting like over 70 plus kids wow. uh, from the foster system. And it's based on real events. Uh, mm -hmm. It's based on, um, I think Possum Trot is a, 
a town in in Texas. So, right, right. So it's it's based on real events, and I'm just like, wow. Uh, again, stories that aren't getting told and Correct. that are somehow more inspirational, if not hopeful and optimistic and things that um, deserve to be told and known. Again, really fast with sight. Yeah. We'll, we'll go over to the possum child image. Okay. Greg Kinnear. I mean, Academy Award nominated actor. Nominee, yeah. Always love him. Great to have, great to see him. Uh, Cabrini had John Lithgow. You had David Morse and then Terry Chen in the lead role. I, I, this is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful to see. Uh, and uh, I, I totally agree with you. It, it totally is going to tug a tug at the heartstrings and inspire oh, yeah. you. Um, this one is going to be heavy. Mm -hmm. This uh, possum trot. Uh, but I love seeing African-American families uh, in a, in just in a just in a pure positive manner uh and, and of being nurturers and being protectors uh mothers and fathers i mean whoo that was a heavy heavy uh uh trailer rosa yeah yes i it, it did give me flashbacks sadly to mm. what i saw at sound of freedom mm. and because of the kids you know the kids are are heavily they are trauma like traumatized so when you are going into a new family how, how do you deal with that and, and it's i mean i can give examples but i don't want to spoil anything but from i mean that what stuck to me was that the parents wanted to give a little boy a shower and he was scared to come near the hot water and i can't even imagine why he's even scared of that and and it's just those images and it's those sequences and it's those little things that just make me oh man they they make me realize that yeah this is going to be an emotionally hefty and an and enduring film okay so talk to me about the next film mm -hmm. uh is it is it young david that you got a first look at yeah they they it's an it's an animated movie uh, they they present it as an animated musical um mm -hmm. that's been in the bakings for if i'm not mistaken i believe i read it set 10 years it's completely crowdfunded so this movie yeah follows uh, uh david and and from what i saw in the trailer um, and he is very much taking care of the sheep and, and, and just being, um, just being a young boy, but also they, they gave us a sneak peek at the, at a musical number. And quite frankly, I was, man, I was very amused by it. It's so, it was so beautiful. Um, obviously the voice of the actor singing it was just so gorgeous, but also it was very catchy. <laughs> Cool. And, and it was very like well choreographed and again like i said beautiful singing voice so i was did not know this was on on the on on, on their slate and sadly this is not going to be coming out until thanksgiving of 2025 oh but, okay okay but, that's, that's a minute yes 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 definitely but oh yeah whatever what they showed us was I was very impressed by it. And, you got uh, to see the a whole like uh, an entire musical number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, very beautiful. That's cool. I mean, animation takes forever, and if it's crowdfunded, yeah. you're saying seven years. Wow, that's yeah, ten years. Ten years. Yeah, it's that's, been that's, in that's the making. That's about right. For ten years. That's about right, yeah. guys. To do it right, incredible, incredible. Well, yeah. that's you know the that's a uh, that's. That's that's a lot of stuff from Angel Studios. Mm -hmm. um, guys, if you're watching this uh, live or on the replay, make sure you comment. Ask us questions like you have been. Day three of CinemaCon. Also, too, the website, you're going to, Rosa's going to be putting up an article up as well. Okay, my friend. Then you went to Lionsgate. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, and we're gonna go from we we got three that we we want to we want to cover, mm -hmm. uh, and Eli Roth, which I saw his Thanksgiving was not a, was not a big fan, mm. but he's got Borderlands and he yeah. was there. 
Yes, they they introduced him. He came out with Ariana Greenblatt, Blatt, um, who is, there she is, uh, who is also in the movie. And this is just a stacked cast. Really? Um, you have Ariana Greenblatt. You have, um, you have Kevin Hart. You have Kate Blanchett. <laughs> you yes. have just such a stacked um uh jamie lee curtis again and jack black as the voice of the little robot that that's around um part of the group and you know what the trailer they showed us the trailer and i was i'm a big guardians of the galaxy fan and this gave me all the guardians of the galaxy vibes that i okay. could have asked for but what piqued my interest more was definitely seeing a there's a reason why I somebody like a Kate Blanchett who's very um, prestigious and very I mean she's a multiple time Academy Award winner and for her to take upon this role it must mean something so mm. Um, yeah, he came out and he started talking about how he was able to gather this whole cast and and how fun it was for them to um, do the movie, to be in production. And then Ariana Greenblatt was very, because um, I believe she's receiving an award from CinemaCon as the um, um, up and coming uh, actress or the Rising Star Award. What else was she in? Uh, she was a Barbie. <laughs> she's the daughter oh, of America the daughter. Ferreira. Yeah. 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 That movie kind of, I kind of, that kind of has been erased from my memory, but <laughs> my man, my, my, uh, my manhood's uh, still, in, still in place. I'm still a macho after seeing Barbie, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Listen. She's, she's also been in, she played little young Gamora in the Avengers. Films. That's right. She's really little. Oh, yeah. Yes. She's and she so she's was... in this one. Yeah, she's a Disney Disney star. She was another in, Disney um, star. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Stuck in the middle. She starred um, with Jenna Ortega. Actually, they were both siblings in that show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I I I don't know these things. I trust you. <laughs> hey, my kids watch that show religiously, so I have no choice but to know. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. this th this one looks good for you. Yes, it, it looked very interesting. Just action packed. It looks more like silly fun rather mm -hmm. than something like Dune or something um, like uh, Furiosa or anything like that. Ooh. It just feels just like Guardians type of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna notch it up a little bit here, and you got mm -hmm. to see a scene from The Crow. Yes. We had like an extended trailer because that was a like a very long trailer. Wow! Um, for the crow, and I wasn't very um. I don't want to say happy, but I wasn't intrigued by the first trailer that came out. A no couple, one was. Nobody was. <laughs> Pero today they gave us a little more insight to it. They they give us more on um, what he does, what happens, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, it's R-rated, so there's some gruesome kills, and just to see um, certain scenes and sequences uh, that Bill, uh, the the I think this is Bill Skarsgård. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's I get all this. I get the siblings. Yeah, the I get them confused. It should be Bill. Um, and man, I was like impressed by it from going from being completely not interested in the movie i walked out of this presentation being quite intrigued by it really really with the sequences they showed us yes so for the sequences that you got to see mm -hmm. uh and you got to see you got to hear 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 and see dialogue between characters as well yes yeah so we get to see obviously what happens to him and the girlfriend but also good i mean I don't know if I'd be spoiling this or not. If you've seen the original Crow, you kind of, it follows the same um, if, story. if it follows the same thing, yeah, then it's, yeah, then it's yeah. not really, I mean, it even says it's a reboot, right? Right, right, right. The remake, whatever. And, yeah. I mean, I guess how he returns or how he comes back and mm -hmm. how that um, there's something to uh, him coming back that I think does... It was very interesting. I was not expecting compared to to the original movie. 
-hmm. However, I, I do think this is going to be more up there, more R-rated than obviously the original Crow. So it, it's... If so the plays. origin and how he comes back and how he's yeah. uh he's you know uh reborn or whatever it is is mm -hmm. different is different slightly there. different yeah slightly different and the relationship with the crow that's all i'll say Ooh, uh, yeah. the relationship with the actual crow with the actual crow yeah but you 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 thought it was interesting enough to where you're like all right i want to check it out yeah 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 so and how was the acting how was the acting you know what i I think I thought it was okay. I, I didn't think it was a standout, or I didn't think it was like, oh my god, I'm mm -hmm. blown away. Um, I think it was well enough, good enough. For, okay, for what it is. Mm -hmm. But the look and feel sold you. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, sounds uh, sounds more sounds more positive than the uh, than your Joker too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If you were to ask me which one would you watch first, I would probably go with the Crow. Okay, anything else you wanted yeah. to add with the, with your 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 first look at a, at the crow an extended scene? Yeah, um, no, nothing else other than now I'm. I'm well, okay. all right, all right, yeah. all right. I, I mean, you obviously saw the '90s. How mm -hmm. do you think people are going to react now? Respond? Yeah. How do you think they? You think they? How about that? Let, let's let me just ask you that question. Mm -hmm. I feel that if, if you're a big fan, obviously it has its cult following, right? Mm -hmm. they there's always i'm pretty sure they're gonna find nitpicks here and there uh, about this one and and how it's handling the story uh but for me who wasn't necessarily i grew up more watching other people uh watching the film and being fans of the movie and obviously it's part of the cultural high um zeitgeist and, and such so mm -hmm. i to me the movie the franchise itself doesn't really mean much okay. uh but i don't i just don't have the nostalgic um connection to it so this one i, I can see people being critical about it <laughs> sadly but gotcha. yeah. i mean to to each their own i will we'll see how how they react because i'm also intrigued to see how other people particularly those who are religiously fanatics of the first i movie, mean will react to it for sure well mm -hmm. thank you for that thank you so much yeah. uh you know i'm curious to see how our audience responds as well <laughs> uh they're 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 not high on just you know remakes and sequels and prequels it's like they've just had enough yeah um but what they haven't had enough of is henry cavill mm -hmm. and you're telling me He's got not one, but two films coming through Lionsgate and Guy Ritchie. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. With, with Guy Ritchie, the collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the first one's going to come out uh, on April 19th. And it's the Ministry of the Ungentlemanly Warfare. And that, that one looked interesting. They showed us the, the trailer for it again. <laughs> and it, it kind of piqued my intre um, interest. Mm -hmm. But the one that's going to be releasing, it releases January of 2025. Um, that one, January 17th, is In the Gray, also another collaboration between um, Guy Ritchie, Henry Cavill. Uh -huh. And in fact, um, I believe Aisa Gonzalez is also in it. Um, and it... it, it same action movies that you know guy ritchie films <laughs> that that we yeah. always get these car chases and, and 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 so on and so forth so and then they were slightly hinting and asking him because he's also going to be in highlander another lionsgate movie um but that one they did try to reserve more and all he said was that he was working hard on it and it's something like he's never done before so that that's all we got about the highlander movie that he's well i mean just to, having his presence there were people excited what was the oh, audience wow. what was the energy like yeah oh yes definitely um everybody was excited and in fact the um, that uh gentleman that was presenting and he was um do doing the presentation for lionsgate he was like <laughs> geeking out <laughs> just talking talking to henry cavill and that one's like henry right out he, of stage he's like he kind of started he started piddling a little oh bit. yes <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> he was like you know what i get to do a oh lot of things God. in this industry and one of them is i have to 
stand right next to somebody like this man and just makes me look absolutely <laughs> the looking That's hysterical. The, the most ugly person in the world yeah. like hey you know yeah. what <laughs> i love it i'm pretty sure a lot of people I feel love it. that way um and and he he and henry himself i mean he mm -hmm. was excited uh, to present the movies and yeah you know, because yeah. we've seen we've seen the the the, the gentleman ungentlemanly uh, trailers a lot. I'm going uh, next week to see it. Right. Uh, what was his vibe? You know what? He was very excited about it. Uh, mm -hmm. He he seems to have a very uh, positive experience working with Guy Ritchie, such so mm -hmm. that he's willing to do it again at time after time. And I guess when you do have the opportunity to be in that environment and work with people that you generally like, mm -hmm. then you're just going to end up creating great films, I guess. Okay. Of those... yeah, he, was, he, he, he looked very like um, I mean, relaxed. He was easygoing yeah. and he seemed very excited about it. I mean, it. relaxed in a three-piece at... suit. I mean, that's a, that's a stud right there. Oh that's a stud. God. Yeah. That, that's a stud. That, that's a chulo. Um <laughs> Of the of the of the films, which one are which one are you personally most excited about? Uh, of Cabell's films, mm -hmm. um, probably the uh, the ungentlemanly ungentlemanly cool. yeah one yeah, yeah I think a lot of people are yeah. yeah that one looks pretty neat yeah and it's based off a true story I'm sure it's loosely yes. based but yeah it's gonna kick butt it's gonna kick butt well you you you've had a great day. Yeah. so far and you're you're heading into the night yeah. with presentations and a film mm -hmm. so tell us about universal focus features what do you expect to to, to get there oh i don't know i'm generally not entirely sure what to expect <laughs> um because hey if you would have asked me yesterday i would not have been uh being able to tell you that I was going to be in the presence of an Anya Taylor Joy and Tim Burton and everybody mm. that came out, or mm -hmm. a Henry Cavill. <laughs> oh, Henry Cavill! And, and so, so it, it's I don't know what to expect, but I am yeah. very much looking forward to it, and we'll see. We'll see what 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 they have in store. And sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Tell me about Neon's Babes. You, you, I know you're excited to go see that film. Yes, they're going to be screening that one tonight, and I got the chance to watch the trailer, and it looked hilarious. Um, whenever, <laughs> whenever that. they depict motherhood in a very comedic um, manner, I'm I'm all in for it because I mean, obviously, as a mother of four kids, I I am always intrigued <laughs> to see what they do with it or what represent they present. Me well. You got to represent. Um, but yeah. oh, there, there are some aspects, you know, of, of, of even I think it focuses more on the pregnancy um, part of it. And and I know a lot of people romanticize pregnancy and motherhood and they want to glorify it and make it the most beautiful thing ever. But oh, in reality, it, it's not. It, it's it's hard. It's very difficult. And at times right. it's hilarious, too. Um, you're, you're put in some of the most awkward and weird situations. And when you can make make and poke fun of that, I'm all for it. <laughs> well, um, guys, you're going to be able to catch her review, at least reaction. You know, we, we've been... Uh, Minding our P's and Q's, obeying the rules, CinemaCon 2024. Remember yeah. that when we come back next year. Because, you know, <laughs> we, we know how to, how to, you know, how to, how to behave. Um, that being said, you can catch some exclusive footage, uh, excuse me, some exclusive uh, uh, content on our latinoslant.com. Because what are you going to, what are you going to be writing about that, you, that, that we can catch? Something yes. pretty, pretty sensational here. Yeah. So again, <laughs> Lionsgate had such a long presentation, mm -hmm. so many movies that again I didn't get the chance right now to talk about, but I will be writing about it. And I'm gonna slightly talk a little bit also about Never Let Go, Halle Berry, starring Halle Berry, um, who was also in 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 um, in part of the presentation. She got a chance to talk about the film. It's mm -hmm. a little horror movie. And then um, Good Fortune, which is written directed by 
and Susan Sari, who was also part of the presentation, and he was just hilarious. He was poking fun of the guy presenting, and he's like, "Yeah, everybody thinks um, he calls me the brown Henry Cavill." And I don't know what. It was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it was just a, right. a, a hilarious. Sure, he is. Part. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, that's funny. That's funny. Um, and then we got to watch a trailer for Ballerina, um, starring Ana de Armas. And we were told that the movie is taking place between John Wick 3 and 4. But I'll be more elaborate when I write about it. Please. And then finally, we got to see trailer a trailer for Michael. Uh, with Michael Jackson, MJ. Michael, M yeah, Michael, Michael Jackson. And obviously, both films will be released next year. But man, it, it's whew, what I saw in that trailer. It's very promising, man. Very promising. Wow. Yeah. Well, he, you know, MJ, MJ still still has a lot of fans all over the world, so that's going to be a huge hit. Yeah. And Ana de Armas, anything Ana de Armas, you know, heads turn. So ballerina, John Wick, look for that, guys. We will have the, those articles up and some exclusive yeah. membership videos. Uh, you're going, uh, you're 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 going hard, man. Third night, then you, you yeah. got your final day coming up. Yep. 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 We're we're almost at the at the, at the finish, finish line. line. Yeah, that's great, guys. Can I remind you guys again to smash the like, comment, and make sure you guys are subscribed. We'll have links to uh, Russ's uh, uh, X uh, uh, profile, Twitter profile. I get so confused sometimes. <laughs> uh, and make sure you catch all our coverage because we have on our homepage. CinemaCon 2024 playlist. All the videos are up that we've been working on. We're going to roll credits and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Um, did, did you get close enough to Henry Cavill? Did he, did, he, did, he, did he smell good? Did he have a nice cologne on? Yeah, no, I, I didn't get... Hey, if I knew he was there, I would have been like front row, man. Just trying to... Trying to yeah. be just mesmerized by the <clears throat> man, and even though I was far away, I was still mesmerized by him. You, you didn't like, you didn't, <clears throat> you didn't like, you know. Was there any, you know, people like jumping over people, throwing stuff yeah. at him? No. Henry, I love you. Henry, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you did have a couple of people stand up and and clap when he came out. Like he's very beloved. <laughs> did, did he get the biggest uh, response today? Uh, no, it was actually Halle Berry. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. It was really? okay. yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Got a big interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, we thank you so much, Rosa. We thank everyone in the chat. We thank all our members here. Uh, we're going to close it up, catch our fourth night, our fourth day coverage as well. We're going to be hopefully live, God willing. Thank you, Rosa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don't have too much fun in Vegas. No, I'm still waiting for the chilaquiles, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you.